From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Peter Turone. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first are Derek and Esther from Mississauga, Ontario, for repose of the souls of their deceased family members and souls in purgatory. And thanksgiving for God's merciful blessings and for the healing of the body, mind, and spirit of their family members. Prayers for vocations, the conversion of sinners, for world peace and an end to human suffering. The second is the Honestchuk family from Windsor, Ontario, in loving memory of William Bill Honestchuk, a devoted family man and an extraordinary husband, father, grandpa, papa, brother, uncle, and friend, who passed away two years ago on March 27, and for the entire Honestchuk and Stankel families, always on our minds, forever in their hearts. The third is Rita Kelly from Baden, Ontario, in loving memory of her husband, Keith, on the fifth anniversary of this passing and for the good health and intentions of her family. Our thanks to the donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that though in our weakness we fail, we may be revived through the passion of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, he is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning weak he will not quench. He will faithfully bring for justice. He will not grow faint or crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who breed out the earth and who comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and the spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you to the righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, the, from the prisoners who, who sit in the darkness, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. i 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Glory o Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, who had raised from the, he had raised from the dead. They gave him a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for the 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. My brothers and sisters, yesterday we proclaimed solemnly the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ on Palm Sunday. Today is the first day of Holy Week or the weekday of Holy Week. And the Holy Church presents us with this very intense moment of divine intimacy where Jesus, he goes and he has dinner with Martha, Mary, and with Lazarus. And as we heard in the responsorial psalm, those beautiful words, the Lord is my light and my salvation. When evildoers come to me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies themselves stumble and fall. So we hear Jesus, I can just imagine during these days, he knows where he's gonna go. He knows that he's going freely to lay down his life for us on the cross. And Jesus, even though he's perfect God, he's also perfect man without sin. But Jesus in his humanity who came to embrace all of humanity in all of our weaknesses and sin so that he can redeem us, he himself is experiencing the anxiety of having to move closer and closer to death. And we're going to hear more about that on Good Friday when we hear that Jesus himself was sweating blood as a consequence of the anxiety. That's something that happens medically when you're under incredible stress. And Jesus himself is going to go through this. But we also see something so powerful here in the gospel. Again, this is right before the Passover. Right? So everything that John says is so significant. So Jesus, right before his incredible suffering, what does he do? He wants to spend time with good friends. He wants to spend time with good friends, not only so that he can support them, but he himself can be supported by them. See, that's the beauty of Jesus Christ, right? That the Lord, he becomes one of us and he wants to become part of our family. And we hear later on in Revelation, he says, if you invite me in, I will dine with you. And this is what they do. And it's understandable. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. So you can imagine the joy of the sisters. So Martha, as is customary, she prepares, I'm sure, would have been an incredible meal. And then Mary, the one who's always sitting and listening, she offers the best that she can give to Jesus Christ, which is this very expensive oil, this nard oil, and it smells incredible. I smelt it once when I was in, uh, on pilgrimage and I had the opportunity and I can smell it and the smell lingered for hours. So imagine, this would have costed, by today's standards, I was told at least $50,000. So you can imagine, $50,000 spent on this oil, and then she uses this to anoint the Lord. And she does this. So Martha gives the best she can with the talents that she has as a cook in her service, and then Mary, through her active listening and anointing Jesus to prepare him for his death, giving him the most expensive thing that she has. Again, these are acts of love there to celebrate the fact that Lazarus has come back to life thanks to the Lord. So there's a lot of rejoicing, but not everybody's happy. 
Because instead of rejoicing, like the elder brother, but in the worst sense of the way, Judas is also there. Judas is not there rejoicing because of what Jesus has done, but we know that he already had planned to betray the Lord. And he does it, and you can see it just by the disposition of the heart, like the words that he says. He says, why was the soil not sold for 300, 300 days wages and given to the poor? And then John adds that he was a thief. He was a thief. I've seen this in my own life. I see this where people insist on doing certain things or in being a certain way, and they fixate on certain problems, but when they themselves are really the cause of the problem, and that they're just speaking what appears to be true and good and beautiful, but deep down, their hearts are corrupt. And Jesus knows this, and Jesus rebukes him. Jesus defends Mary, and he says, look, what's happening now, this is a preparation for what's going to happen later, because he himself in a few days is going to go again and lay down his life. So it's a very painful moment. Jesus is about to enter again. He's celebrating this Passover, but Jesus, as John tells us, is the eternal Passover. A few years ago, Pope Francis instituted a new memorial. It's called, it's a, an, not, it's not an optional memorial, but it's an obligatory one. And this takes place on July the 29th. So normally it was reserved for Martha, but then he extended it to Lazarus and to Mary as well. And the reason why we didn't celebrate one for Mary at the time was because we weren't sure who she was. But so that's sort of been resolved and therefore we have this memorial. And the reason why I bring this up is because uh, Pope Francis, right, when he made this decision, he highlighted three aspects to their relationship and why uh, it's so important for us to look at them as models. So they invite Jesus into their home. So there's this invitation, this openness, not only of the home, but we know ultimately it's the heart as well. The second thing is that they listen to Jesus. So they have the disposition of the heart to want to hear what he has to say. And the third thing is that they believe that he is the resurrection and the life. So they invite him, they listen, and they believe. These are very important. And we know that throughout this Lenten journey, we've been called to pray and to fast and to give alms. But all of these things that we're called to do, these practices of Lent, are always there so that we can have a deeper intimacy with our Lord, right? That's what it comes down to. And also on how to live that continued experience in the community. Think about your own life. We've all been through difficult moments. And it's so important to be able to have a brother and a sister, a family to be able to lean on. And sometimes it's not our biological family, sometimes it is, but it can be members of our community. Jesus says through our baptism, we become one flesh. So it's so important as Christians that we support each other, that we're there not only looking for support, but finding members in the community when we hear that something is going on, they're going through a difficult moment, maybe somebody's dying of cancer, you know, they're getting close to death, uh, somebody is struggling with their faith. These acts of mercy, right, they flow again from that encounter with Jesus. So this is what we're called to do, right, to be more like the merciful Father, to be more like the merciful Son. So reaching out, finding people that are suffering, and offering support to them through our prayers, through our words, and also by providing concretely to them. A simple meal brought to someone who's struggling can really open hearts. And we do this always cognizant of the fact that in the middle of this group, of this community, of course, is Jesus himself. So community is absolutely important, but a community that can provide truth and meaning and consolation that is not just based on a foundation of simple words, right, common slogans, but something that is rooted in the Word of God, again, must be rooted in Christ. So we ask God for ourselves. We spend more time thinking about what Jesus was going through. I would be very surprised if these words were not in his mind and in his heart as he was preparing to go closer and closer to the cross, leaning on his friends. We know that, unfortunately, the disciples all abandoned him out of fear at that moment. But we know that we can do that as well out of fear. So we ask God for courage, and we ask him for strength, and we ask him for a deep love so that we'll never abandon him, and nor will we abandon our brothers and sisters in their need as well.
Let us now pray to the Lord. My brothers and sisters, let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For all those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask in our community prayer that you might guide us to enter more deeply into the spirit of Lent and into the forgiveness, reconciliation, and renewal that it offers us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people of the world who need our care, the starving, the homeless, the lonely, and the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For adults and children preparing to join the church through baptism, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. God of wisdom and light, your words guide our lives. Hear the prayers we make in faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look graciously, O Lord, upon the sacred mysteries we celebrate here, and may what you have mercifully provided to cancel the judgment we incurred bear for us fruit in eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Martha, Mary, Lazarus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 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 Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy, worthy that you should enter into my room, room but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Visit your people, O Lord, we pray, and with ever watchful love, look upon the hearts dedicated to you by means of these sacred mysteries, so that under your protection, we may keep safe this remedy of eternal salvation, which by your mercy we are received through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May your protection, O Lord, we pray, defend the humble and keep ever safe those who trust in your mercy that they may celebrate the Paschal festivities, not only with bodily observance, but above all, with purity of mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.